Hello, everyone. Today, we will be focusing our discussion on the main bonding jumper and the system bonding jumper for a grounded system. These two types of bonding jumpers serve the same purpose and share similar installation requirements. During our conversation, we will explore the materials, construction, attachment methods, and sizing specifications outlined in section 250.28 of the code. Without further ado, let's bond together and delve deeper into this topic of bonding jumpers. The illustration shows a grounded service system with a secondary voltage of 480 volts. The premises also required a voltage of 208 volts and 120 volts. Hence, a step-down transformer is provided. This illustrates the main bonding jumper and system bonding jumper, which serve identical electrical functions in a grounded AC system. Their purpose is to connect the equipment grounding conductors to the grounded circuit conductor, either at the source of a separately derived system or at the first disconnecting means provided by the source. The distinction lies in their installation locations, as the main bonding jumper is installed at the service equipment, while the system bonding jumper is installed specifically at separately derived systems. In another illustration, the location of the system bonding jumper is at the first disconnecting means of a separately derived system. What are the requirements of the code for these bonding jumpers in a grounded system? The code required that the materials for main bonding jumpers and system bonding jumpers be of copper, aluminum, copper-clad aluminum, or other corrosion-resistant material. A main bonding jumper and a system bonding jumper shall be a wire, bus, screw, or similar suitable conductor. The 2017 edition of the NEC did not explicitly mention the use of aluminum and copper-clad aluminum, except in Table 250.102, C1, which provided guidelines for the minimum size of the main bonding jumper based on the material type. However, in the 2020 NEC, it is clearly stated that main bonding jumpers made of aluminum and copper-clad aluminum are now permitted. Typically, the main bonding jumpers are supplied by the electrical equipment manufacturer for listed equipment intended to be used as service equipment. Both the main bonding jumper and system bonding jumper can be in the form of a wire, bus, screw, or a similar suitable conductor. The accompanying photos illustrate examples of main bonding jumpers made of bus and screw. If a bonding jumper is in the form of a screw, the screw must be finished with a green color that shall be visible with the screw installed as specified in section 250.28b. This identification requirement ensures easy differentiation of the bonding jumper screw from other screws in the grounded conductor terminal bar, thus verifying the presence of the required bonding connection. Further, the main bonding jumper and system bonding jumper should be connected using one or more of the methods described in section 250.8, which outlines the permitted and prohibited methods for connecting grounding and bonding equipment. The size of the main and system bonding jumpers that are supplied by the electrical equipment manufacturer for the listed equipment shall comply with the sizing rules in the appropriate product safety standard. However, if these bonding jumpers are to be sized, they must comply with the guidelines outlined in 250.28 D. 1 through D. 3. According to section 250.28 D. 1, these bonding jumpers should not be smaller than the sizes specified in Table 250.102, C1. This table is used to determine the appropriate sizes for the grounded conductor, main bonding jumper, system bonding jumper, and supply side bonding jumper based on the size of the largest ungrounded phase conductor. The left side of Table 250.102, C1, corresponds to the size of the largest installed ungrounded conductor while the right side provides the required size for the grounded conductor, main bonding jumper, system bonding jumper, or supply side bonding jumper. The minimum size of these bonding jumpers is 8 AWG if made of copper, and a minimum size of 6 AWG for aluminum or copper-clad aluminum. Note 1 under the new table contains the 12.5% rule to be used when the largest ungrounded conductor or equivalent area for parallel conductors is over 1100 kc mil copper or 1750 kc mil aluminum. Stay tuned for a separate discussion that will focus on sizing and provide sample calculations for the main bonding jumpers and system bonding jumpers, as outlined in 250.28 D1 through D3. Thank you all for watching. Thank <laughs> you.